congratulations. Yes. You didn't really break sweat, did you? What, in considering the outcome or the game itself? Uh, both, really. Yes. Both, yes. No, yes. Is the answer. I mean, um, to say Scotland were a disappointment, Danny is putting it mildly. Good morning, Danny. Good morning. I, uh, do you know what? It's not so much they were a disappointment. They were just outclassed. I, sometimes you, you just got to hold your hands up. And so England should outclass them as well with the players we've got compared to your squad. Yeah. You know, they've got wonderfully gifted players and they performed it like they had a little rocket from maybe the uh, performance at the weekend. And it was comfortable. It was comfortable. comfortable. It was way too comfortable. Simon, not only that, um, we were looking at this this morning. Uh, the last time Scotland beat England, we've had six prime ministers since. <laughs> PlayStation 2, 3, 4 and 5 were released. The iPhone was invented. Saka, Foden and Bellingham weren't born. Mm. I mean... It's gone on a long time. <clears throat> what is depressing this morning from a Scottish point of view, as Danny rightly says, is the golf was here to be seen yep. for everybody. It was laid bare last night, wasn't it? Yes, but obviously you're talking to someone that's unsurprised by the outcome, that had the conversation with you yesterday, that spoke about the reality of the value of this game to the English is far different to the Scots. We are more concerned about losing than we are about winning because losing comes with the aggravation of having to listen to people rather than the euphoria of winning because it's priced in to our thinking. I would have expected England to be a better side than Scotland. I would expect England because we have a bigger league. We have all of yeah. the odds in our favour. Yeah. And the only noise that we have to listen to is the background noise from those such as yourself. Thank you. I mean, Danny, when it came to it, levels ultimately came to the fore, didn't they? And England are on a way different level to Scotland. Well, they played really well, actually. They played through the lines beautifully. That's because they had, you know, the two centre-halves, Duncan, Gurhey, both really comfortable on the ball, playing through the lines. That helps. And then Bellingham, I mean, don't know where to start with him, really. He's, he's incredible for his age. Um, and the likes of Foden and Rashford around him, it was, it was great to watch. There was a real creativity about them, yeah. a real freedom in the play. But... You know, you have to put it in perspective. It's a friendly game against lesser opposition. We would beat 9 out of 10. So the fact is that you don't learn that much from playing teams of that quality, really. Mm. Yeah. Thanks zero, very much. It's a zero-sum game for us. All right, now, enough now. But it is. Enough now. It is. There's no joy in this. It's like pulling the legs off a fly or putting salt on a slug. Yeah. It's not particularly rewarding. Have you ever yes. done that? Yeah. No, but I've seen, seen people it, that yeah. do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we'll, we'll the, the words in this well-known phrase, your face shut. <laughs> um, but this was Steve Clark post-match. England played very well, I thought, especially the first half. Uh, they got the 2-0 lead, makes it difficult to come back. Decent response in the second half from us, I thought. Decent response. We had a good 30 minutes where we were f trying to force the game to get back in. We got back in on 2-1, uh, switch off again and the game goes 3-1 it's, it's over but I'm not sure I was the one getting carried away too much I, I said the game would be something that I could look at afterwards I had some things I wanted to see tonight before we go to Spain next month for the competitive game and I'll go away I'll an analyse the game and I'll see what we can do better Alright well that was Steve Clark. another Scott was very direct last night on telly, Graham Souness. Danny, England are a really good team at the moment and I think they're destined to get their hands on a trophy with this group of players. So this is it, isn't it? The time has come. It's the time Germany next summer. Well, it's got to be, hasn't it, for Gareth? Um, what, because we beat the Scots? No, be before the game, I'd say the same. This is the best opportunity we've had in a long, long time. Yeah. And I don't. I think if we don't win it, irrelevant of hard luck stories, irrelevant of how we play it, I think that'll be his last tournament. But he's got a great opportunity with this group. If he's got everyone fit, he's got a wonderful opportunity. I mean, it'd be a failure if he doesn't win it, would it not? With this with, with, with this team, I know we've spoken about this so often, but yet with, with talent like that, and I know, yes, it was the Scots, and I get it. And you're yeah. not wrong to say that, incidentally. Mm. Got to take this in the chin this morning. I mean, my Twitter account was... Difficult not to, isn't it? Yeah, it was like a <laughs> meltdown last night. Don't you worry, I'll front <laughs> up to it. Because you have to front up to it. But with the talent that England have got, yeah. I think, Simon, the time has come. Almost irrespective of what Gareth does, mm. the, the team on the pitch no. can do... Look at the free roll Bellingham's got. Sure, but we are always able... OK, there was a lot of disappointments. 
about the performance and the, the noise was very different. And I wonder if soon as it had been perched in the studio for the Ukraine game, he'd have been saying the same things as he's now said about Scotland, about our performance against Scotland. When we come up against better opposition and when we come up against opposition that's capable of doing to us what we're doing to them, then the questions need to be asked and subsequently answered. And they have yet to have been so in previous incarnations. Yes, of course, three attempts. In most instances, three strikes and you're out. And in Southgate's instances, he's had a semi-final, a final, and the loss to France, quarter final, uh, a quarter-final. Yeah. So with that in mind, he's getting another a roll of the dice. And probably, to some extent, he merits it to this extent. To, 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 oh, to, there you go. No, he merits another tournament. I don't. And, and if that tournament doesn't come with an outcome attached to it, mm. then that's the end of the discussion as far well, as I'm concerned. he probably knows that himself. Yeah, and, 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 and I think he's probably thinking that himself, as we, as we rightly say. But this, the, 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 the arguments that Graham was putting forward, I don't know whether he's being slightly Machiavellian. I don't know whether he's loading the pressure on England so that he can be one of the pundits when they fall down at the next opportunity of playing against a big side that will turn around and say, here we are with England again with all this potential, all this opportunity, this generation of players, and yet again, the English disease of no, choking... I don't up. think he's that cynical. I think he just said Graham. it how... I think he said it how he saw it. I don't okay. think he was that cynical in that moment, should I say. <laughs> Possibly not. I don't, I, don't, I don't think... Well, most people in football who, who understand football see this group of players and think there's no reason why they can't win the Euros because they're, su- they're, they're a super talented bunch. Is it's this an obvious generation thing to... more golden than the so-called so golden changed? generation say, sorry, of Beckham what's, and the rest? What's changed, sorry, Jim, what's changed then for most group of people looking at the fact that we've lost to everybody that we on paper are either matched against fairly or, or potentially going in as slight underdogs? Uh, is, has, have I missed a memo somewhere? What do you mean? Well, we, well, every we got we... to the final of the last Euros, yeah, so therefore and we, we were close and we lost, yeah, and we lost. right, for various right. reasons. Yeah, but The lost. World Cup and Euros are different, so when you play the World Cup, the expectation might be different. My, what I'm saying is... Go on. No, but what I'm saying is we're, we're going to play an opposition in the European Championships yeah, who, who that capable. on paper yeah. are capable of beating us. Yeah. And as to date, with the exception of the 5-1 drubbing of the Spanish um, early in, in Southgate's tenure... Most of the time we've come up in big competition or in any meaningful competition, whether it's the Dutch and the Euro nations or whether it's the Spanish or whether it's um, the Croatians, uh, the Italians or the French, we fall in fact. So what has changed since since those scenarios? Well, we've got the same group of players to some extent. We've Bellingham's got the same manager. probably the biggest difference. Okay. He's arrived in the scene. Bellingham's He's a, a difference. I Bellingham's the biggest difference. You've yeah. also got players like you'd hope Foden and Saka being better than they were two years ago or even a year ago. You know, they're improving all the time, competing for places. I think there's just a, a positivity around Are the group. Are we better defensively? It depends who we play and how we play again, because the big question the big question for me with Gareth is is in those big games you're talking about, those moments, yep. can he do something different than he's done before to swing the game in our favour? Yes. And that might be high risk where you play four or f- maybe five attack minded yep. players. The big debate's in the middle of the park at the moment with England. He's gonna play a back four. We look like we're going to play back four. I don't think he's going to deviate from that. You've got your two wide men and a forward. Now, the big debate with England is, do you play one holding player and two eights, or two holding players and a ten? Now, Bellingham can play at eight and a ten as e- as equally as well as anyone on the planet, right? That's not a problem for him. The problem most people have is that when he plays the two eights, he likes the other one to be a defensive-minded player. So even though he's playing ahead of Declan, it might be a Henderson, it might whoever it may be. Mm. Phillips played alongside him as a two last night. Whereas most people want to see, if you play two eights, they want to see that being a Bellingham and a Foden, a Bellingham and a Madison. Because it's that's, offensive looking. Yeah, that's the little difference, that those little, those little nuances, if you like, that can win games for you or lose them. And what he's done in the three tournaments so far, he's, he's stuck to the same M.O., which is, I'm going to go against the best teams, Croatia, Italy, France, a bit safe. Mm. And we'll try and get over the line. And it's not worked. So that formula has got him so so far and yeah. nearly, so maybe within himself, he's like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And that will get me over the line eventually. Rather than, it hasn't got me over the line, maybe I should have a little tweak and a rethink. Because I think most people would say, if he went in there, even if it was, a, let's say we played France in the semi-final of the Euros, and he stuck Declan Rice holding midfielder and he went, Bellingham, you play as an eight. Don't worry about helping him too much. Get, you know, let's yeah, go. Get and, and I'll stick yeah. Madison or Foden yeah. in there with you as a tech. Two eights. Yeah. And then we'll have two wide men. So, in effect, the Dutch talk about it, Dutch coaches talk about it as a, a five and a five. So, it's called a five. They used to call five and a five. Five defensive players, five attackers going to win us the game. Hmm. Then he's more of a six and a four, Gareth. Some people are seven and three. You know, this this 
this yeah, contrast yeah, yeah. between yeah. defensive minded players yeah. and attacking minded players all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the biggest question mark is in those big moments, not when you're playing lesser nations, when you're playing the big boys. Yes. Is he going to go, we're going to go for this? Go one. for it. Yeah. Or I'll stick to what I always do and it'll get us over the line. But the difference, Danny, is Bellingham, isn't he? The difference is Bellingham. There be. was no Bellingham, of course, in, in He played in against Russia. France. To, there was to no fair. Bellingham uh, against the Italians. No. There was no Bellingham when, when you needed him. Uh, you know, at key moments, at key moments He's a game in, in the past when you've been dominated. If you get Bellingham going forward, I don't think anyone's safe. He's, he's, he's physically perfect and technically brilliant. And he and he wants to score goals, yeah. but his his tenacity and his hunger and his play, I've never seen anyone run off the ball as much as him. Mm. Any young players watching Bellingham should not be watching the goals and the passes and the skill. His running off the ball when others are playing to create space is yeah. phenomenal. And he he as I said, doesn't matter if he plays an eight or ten, but he could be the type of player that gets you over the line against the France. Exactly. Or okay, Germany. well, through gritted teeth, certainly. Graham Sooner said last night, England destined now to get their hands in a trophy with this group of players. And that group of players includes Bellingham. Is he right? And is Bellingham key to England and Southgate oh, at key. last lifting a trophy? You can let us know this morning because feel free to come on and gloat if you want. But make your points as well. 03717-22334-81089. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.